Hi everyone, welcome to DevOps Info Channel. Today we are going to take a look at the passwordless sign-in via the FIRO key and the steps to extend this passwordless to the on-premise applications. In the previous video, uh, we had a look at how to utilize the FIRO via the passwordless sign-in through the Authenticator app, uh, which you have it in your uh, Android or iOS device. Now we will look at uh, how to use the FIDO key, uh, FIDO security keys, and what are the steps to extend this to your on-premise environment. For FIDO keys, uh, uh, well, there are a lot of products available in the market. Uh, uh, I saw uh, some good reviews uh, about the the, the Ubico product, uh, and uh, I also need to buy one for my uh, daughter uh, since uh, she has trouble typing in the password uh, on her laptop. So uh, I, I bought the YubiKey, uh, the Bio series. Uh, uh, it, it, it's very compact uh, uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, it has a, a hole where you can hook in easily uh, with your uh, keychain and carry it everywhere. Uh, so I, I see this to be nice. Uh, so we'll take a look at this and also we'll see how to, um, you know, extend the FIDO uh, basically to your own privacy resources. There are a few steps that we need to carry out uh, uh, to make this successful. Um, so uh, YubiKey Bio series uh, supports the biometric authentication uh, using fingerprint recognition for secure uh, and seamless passwordless logging. So this is built primarily for uh, the biometric authentication and also we have few for the NFC. Uh, so in this video, we're going to see for the bio, bio, the bio series uh, from the YubiKey. Um, and also it works out of the box uh, with operating systems, uh, browsers, uh, including the Windows, uh, Mac OS, Chrome OS, uh, Linux, and also the Edge browsers. So basically for setting up uh, the, the bio key, uh, we need to enable the FIDO security in the authentication methods policy via the Azure portal. So all you need to do is you need to navigate to the, uh, uh, the Azure portal, uh, in the security, you need to come down uh, to the authentication methods. Uh, this was the same place which we navigated in the previous video. Uh, it's going to be the same. So here we are going to select uh, the FIDO security key. So uh, when you go into, go into the FIDO security, key, uh, FIDO security key, here you have option to select the groups and then uh, add it. So here I have just created a group called tester and added uh, three people over here. And um, there is something called configure. Uh, you, uh, of course, you have to enable uh, the, you have to turn on the toggles which are enabled. Uh, and uh, when coming into the configure, uh, there are a few settings that we can uh, enable it over here. For example, when you, uh, when you are enabling uh, the UB keys, you need to make sure uh, the allow self-service setup is turned on. So if it is turned off, uh, then users will not be able to register the FIDO key uh, through the My Security Info portal. So uh, you, you need to make sure that this is turned on. And the second one is like the enforced attestation. Uh, this is uh, mandate, uh, This is re recommended to turn it on to yes, uh, because uh, when you turn it on to yes, uh, uh, the, the, the FIDO security key metadata is uh, published uh, uh, and verified with the FIDO Alliance uh, metadata service. So the FIDO Alliance metadata service uh, is a centralized repository uh, of the metadata, uh, which is used by the link parties uh, to validate the authenticated attestation and uh, prove the genuineness of your device model. So it's basically to approve your attestation and then uh, check the genuineness of your device. Uh, Microsoft uh, does a two set of validation uh, if, if, if you turn this on. So when you turn this on, uh, the first one is it's verified with the FIDO Alliance metadata service. And also Microsoft does some additional set of validation testing, but that information is not uh, uh, clear to me. Uh, and I did not uh, do much uh, 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 deep dive on that. But uh, the first thing is Microsoft checks with the FIDO Alliance metadata service only when the enforced attestation is turned on. Uh, so this metadata service provides information about the certification status of the authenticators uh, and uh, if at all if there is any security issues then uh, they will report it uh, to the microsoft so organizations deploying uh, FIDO authentication uh, uh, can use this information uh, to select uh, you know uh, the specific certification levels uh, that is required for the compliance 
and uh, work through the uh, security notifications uh, to ensure uh, you know uh, if there are any effective incident responses so it's recommended to turn this on um, and then uh, the the next thing is you have some enforce key restrictions uh, you can turn this to on uh, just in case if you want to use only uh, certain fido keys uh, that can be used by the users like uh, by adding uh, their aad widths then you are allowing only a certain uh, type of a key series so, um, yeah so this is uh, the, the only thing so regarding the enrollment the end user who is part of this group uh, he needs to navigate to mysignins.microsoft.com i can show that uh, in a minute So while it is coming up, uh, this is the place where you need to enable. Okay, so here you need to go into the security info. It's taking some time. So here, what you need to do is uh, the user who is a part of the group just need to select the added sign-in method, and then uh, he needs to choose the option uh, security key and uh, click on add. The moment when he clicks on security key and add, uh, he will be just uh, prompted uh, to approve the second factor authentication uh, on his uh, mobile device or the type how he's uh, verifying. Uh, because uh, it's uh, something uh, a security uh, modification which you are doing in, uh, in in the authentication part so the moment when i click on uh, yes uh, it brings me uh, to the two options uh, where i can uh, choose uh, what type of uh, fido uh, login i need to use uh, it's loading we should wait a few seconds okay so I think we got it already. So here you see the type of the security keys that you have. You need to select USB or NFC device. Uh, the NFC is the near field communication. That is also type of the authentication that you have uh, for the FIDO. But in my case, I'm just need, I need to use the USB. But here I already have uh, enrolled it uh, on uh, one of the account which I have. So I'm not going to do it. Uh, but however, I would show you uh, what is the results of the login. So going back, uh, if you uh, uh, for, for one of the user who is already part of this login, uh, after uh, the login is uh, completed, you can just select for that particular user. Uh, in my case, uh, it's going to be the user uh, Sika. So the moment when I select this particular user i just scroll all the way down and select authentication methods over here i see the fido to security key so uh, there are two types uh, the fido to security key and the iphone so i'm just selecting the fido to security key and view details the moment when i click on um, this okay so you see here uh, the display name uh, this would be asked when you register the fido uh, and then you can give it over here and then uh, the date created model uh, and the a8 uh, remember uh, the uh, you know the fido specification requires uh, the security key provider uh, an authenticator uh, uh, attestation grid so uh, like uh, each security key provider uh, needs to have an authenticate and attestation grid uh, during the attestation so this is a 128 bit identifier uh, indicating uh, what is the key type, uh, such as the make and the model. So uh, this this one, each every device would be having the AA grid. Uh, and uh, if you see uh, the attested level, attested because we have turned this on. Uh, we we talked about uh, uh, the the FIDO Alliance metadata service. So uh, that that is confirmed like it is attested. So that's the reason it is attested, and it is having the attestation certificate uh, because. Uh, uh, the MDS will uh, valid, uh, like validate the certification status of the authenticators 
and if this attestation certificate is having any issues then it will uh, you know uh, report this uh, via the the mds uh, 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 alliance metadata service so going further uh, let's take a look at how to enable the passwordless uh, security uh, into the on premise resources uh, so uh, like uh, just now we we saw how we are doing this with the fido so now we are going to take a look at how to extend this feature on the on premise set little bit of explanation how this functionality is extended uh, from the cloud to the on premise uh, uh, which can be uh, used for all the applications which is present near, near on premise uh, provided the application also needs to have uh, this enabled uh, for the passwordless so um, i have the, the the microsoft article in front of me so uh, if you take a look at this um, uh, picture so when the user tries to log in with the fido key the first time um, he would be first negotiating with the azure active directory and azure active directory will uh, see the uh, kerbos key associated for your domain uh, keep in mind for each and every domain uh, let's say contesto or redmond uh, it creates a, a, a separate keys so uh, it will have it will look for the keys uh, uh, and then it will uh, create a partial tgt uh, and that partial tgt will be uh, attached to your uh, primary uh, uh, prt and it would be sent to the windows uh, 10 client uh, so the windows 10 client is uh, capable enough to know that uh, okay uh, this is a password signing and uh, i need to uh, trade off the the remaining uh, tgt uh, from the active directory uh, of its own environment so the windows 10 would uh, request the, the remaining tgt to the active directory uh, so the active directory here uh, will uh, uh, have one rodc object that rodc object would uh, finally uh, generate uh, the the remaining uh, tgt uh, and finally it would give a fully formed uh, tgt to the, to the user so the user when uh, when he receives the fully formed tgt he would be able to log in into the on premise resources so if you take a look at that yeah that's the explanation which is given at the below the user sign in to the windows 10 device as you already checks for a turbo server key uh, that matches the user's on premise active directory domain and then the azure already generates the turbo's tgt uh, for the user on premise and uh, would uh, give it uh, to the user uh, client machine the client machine contacts the ad uh, and then creates the partial tgt so one important thing that you need to know is this rodc object is not associated with any physical service uh, it's simply a resource that can be used by azure active directory to generate a turbo tgt uh, within your active directory domain so uh, you know like when a user logs into the windows with the fido key uh, the ms cloud authentication package uh, knows how to handle uh, this fido auth and then uh, it will do a handshake with uh, the common url login.microsoftonline.com uh, that will return the auth uh, prt and this cloud mentored uh, tgt uh, so your uh, rodc kerbos ticket uh, secret is used to decrypt the partial and then it returns it to the client uh, as a fully formed PGT. Uh, so coming to the steps, how to enable, uh, you have the steps described in the article, which we are going to take a look at uh, in a few minutes. Uh, so basically you need to have this prerequisite, uh, the patches uh, on 2016 and 2019. Uh, uh, hopefully they should be installed, uh, but you, you can verify. Uh, and then there are a few uh, prerequisites if you have the network security and also uh, uh, you need to have uh, uh, the, the global admin and domain admin password to do this because you need to create a RDC object. In my case, I'm just logging into one of uh, my uh, test environment where I have the domain controller. So I just simply ran the command uh, which is uh, mentioned in, in the article. It's a simple, straightforward. Uh, you, you just need to download the Kerbos PowerShell module and then uh, run the below uh, command. So the moment when I run it, uh, it, it is bringing me to uh, uh, uh it is it, it makes to create a rodc object so after uh after you complete running it there is also a command that you can run uh to check the uh azure ready Kerbo server in my case it's already created and then it's uh it was created in the yeah it was just created today because i just ran it a few hours back 
uh, and then you could see uh, the key uh, updated. When was the key updated? Uh, as you know, uh, even for on-premise, you have the uh, uh, Kerbos, uh, the golden ticket uh, that can be the keys can be rotated. The same thing is also here for this ROTC object. It's always recommended to rotate the keys uh, in the schedule where you're uh, rotating your uh, the golden ticket. Uh, that that is for your uh, uh, on-prem uh, domain controllers. So going back. Uh, to the active directory users and configures after you complete running your uh, uh, the command which which is uh, in the article you would see an azure uh, ad kerbos rodc which is uh, created in your uh, domain controllers container so the moment when you click on it uh, double click okay so here uh, you see uh, it is uh, not having uh, you know a last log on or last log of anything i have restarted it multiple times um, and also it doesn't have any os version it uh, has only the ms uh, curve tgt link uh, you have this uh, and then the good thing is uh, there is msgs never revealed group where uh, you know all these users uh, are uh, in, in the denied group so the, the users, uh, the account operators, server operators, domain admins, all they are uh, a part of the uh, never revealed group. Uh, so uh, this object is used only for uh, you know generating uh, the partial TGT. Along with that, it also creates an account uh, which uh, you could see uh, because that account and this RODC is responsible for uh, the account and this, uh, yeah, uh, the account uh, and this one is responsible. Um, okay, so for some reason it is not coming. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, Uh, let me see the uh, account name uh, actually speaking it should be showing here also yeah this is the user account so it generates this user account as well yeah if you see this uh, this uh, azure recurve server user account is disabled and this is used for uh, you know, uh, generating the partial TGT with the RODC which you have. So uh, it's it's very important that uh, you know you should not touch this account uh, because this is used for uh, forming the partial TGT uh, for extending the SSO for the FIDO key uses in your uh, on-premise resource. Uh, yeah. So by using these steps, uh, you can uh, definitely uh, benefit of uh, you know using the FIDO extension completely to your on-premise resources. So this method can also be, you know, uh, benefit the passwordless uh, for the on-prem resources uh, environment for both Azure AD joint devices and hybrid joint Windows devices. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk to you uh, talk about this uh, the FIDO authentication extending them to the on-premise. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you.